vantage point of view of the wonders that God has wrought in our lives. It's so important. So important. And I praise the Lord when we come up and we tell the great things God has done in our lives and for us during the past week. And his ear is tickled to, you know, they tickles his ear to hear the praises going forth. So I welcome you to our worship service from Irma, South Carolina. Another day that the Lord has designed to meet with his people on the Sabbath day. So wherever you are, whatever time you will be watching, if it's live or later on, again, again, may God be with you. You feel him near to you and uh, that the Holy Spirit will enlighten your understanding of the sermon prepared for today. Estamos viniendo a ustedes desde la ciudad de Irma en Carolina del Sur y estamos contentos de que usted puede o tiene la habilidad de estar con nosotros, ya sea que lo está haciendo en vivo o más adelante esperamos que usted sienta la presencia del Señor muy cerca de usted. Feliz sábado. God is good, isn't he? Amen. Uh -huh. God is good. Amen. Yes. So the, 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 the proof of the pudding is that you and I were here last week and we're here today. So he has kept us. He's been faithful to his word, to his word. And I just, I'm just in awe for the cooperation that you folks bring to this um, church. To this congregation it's so amazing to see how God can take someone without much but if you are willing to serve he will supply that need in your life so thank you for that and uh, I'm sure that um, I am not important in this congregation because with or without me the Lord will lead his church Amen. so so I'm looking forward to to see what God will do while we're away in a, in a, in a, in that trip that we need to take. Let's go back to the to the to the uh, word of God. Your words were found, and what happened? This is Jeremiah speaking now. And I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart, for I am called by your name. Oh, Lord God of hosts. Is this what you feel in your life? Yeah. Huh? I hope so. I hope so because if it's not, then it is fruitless for us to call ourselves Christians. It is fruitless to come to church if there's not an ulterior goal that is to be with Jesus and to assimilate him in our lives. Today, today, our topic that I have chosen is feed on the word. Feed on the word. Question. Might be silly, but I think it's important. Or maybe we have not thought about it, but why do we eat? Why do we eat? Now, don't ask me, why do you, why do you eat too much? That's a different story. Yeah. But why do we eat? To Any takers? To live. To live. Okay. Why? And, uh, yes. Enjoyment. Enjoyment. Okay. Yeah. You, yeah. Yeah. When you're sad, you, your appetite goes away. Yes, that's true. Nutrition. Nutrition. Okay. Well, you know, we're all in the ballpark where, you know, it's an acceptable answer. But why do we eat? And it's very simple. I'm going to take you back to the origin, Genesis, Genesis 1. And if you follow us, it's Genesis 1 from chapter, uh, verse 26. God said, what? Let us make mankind in our image and our likeness. 27. So he did. He did. He created female and male. He created them both. 28. And then he gave a command to what? To be fruitful 
and increase and to fill the earth and subdue it. And 29 is the punchline. He said, I am giving you all these things that it will be what? Your food. Why do we eat? That is how God designed us to live. And not only us. Look at the verse 30. The beasts, the birds, every creature that moves, everything that has life. I gave you all these things for food. And it was so. And when everything was finished, verse 31 says that God saw that everything was very good. Now, we are an amazing machine. Huh? Do you don't believe that? We are an amazing machine. You know, God has allowed man in in the medical field or an allied um, fields to explore beyond our comprehension. Yes, you know, a person can come in today, tomorrow, seven o'clock, be in the, in the uh, operating suite and have his or her heart stopped completely and then fix what's not good in there create a bypass from one to five that's how as much people do and patch it up next morning is walking Amen. it is amazing amazing a few years decades uh, before it was a death sentence but god in his mercy Amen. because he loves us right. he has allowed in every field medicine, uh, engineering, what else? Uh, the ones with numbers, computers, oh my goodness. You know, to make life easier for us. No wonder, no wonder, King David, he was astonished beyond belief. And he said, you have formed me, my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. And I praise you for I am what? Fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. But what happened? That was God's plan for us to live in a, a full bliss forever. That's how that was the intent of God. But we know our first parents succumbed. To the wiles of the devil. And everything was disrupted from then. Ever since. And if you go back. If you go back. We are told that Adam was twice the size of a current man. An individual that lives now. We look at so and so, almost seven feet, and we what? We just in awe. I am more in awe because I I never reached six feet. <laughs> but the thing is, you see in that picture how it was, and look where we are. What does that tell you? Going down, going down, and here in Genesis six. God saw the declension, the, the uh, deterioration of mankind. And then he saw that his thoughts and his actions were what? Consistently or continually to do what? Evil. 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 To the point that in our vernacular, God said, my goodness, what was I thinking? Right? Now, did that catch God by surprise? No, no, no. And this is where some folks have an issue saying, well, if he knew why. One thing, one answer, God is love. He loves company. And even though he knew what you and I would do today, he still loves us. He loves us. 
And because we have the freedom of choice, he puts up with us in spite of. So physically and spiritually, we just drop the ball. But then, then, when Adam and Eve were driven away from the Garden of Eden, God said, these folks have eaten of the tree of life. We will protect them. And he put cherubs with a revolving sword to prevent from sinful Adam and Eve to go back and eat of the tree. Otherwise, we would have become an immortal race. The Bible is very explicit that the only one that has immortality is whom? God. God. So, from time, week after week, Adam would come with his children. And he would tell them. He would tell them about the plan of salvation. And these words that I command you today shall be where? On your? Come on, folks. Help me out. On your heart. Pay attention to this. And these words, who is speaking there? Who is speaking there? Who is giving the charge? God. To whom? To you and to me. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. By the way, if you follow, last week it was the divine manual about the Bible. Today it's about the Bible, and next week we will be about the Bible. These words, if those words, if God's word is not in my heart, how can I give something to my posterity? And he said, you shall teach them diligently. See the words that God uses. Diligently to your children. I shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way, when you lay down and when you rise. Basically, 24-7. Oh, but the naysayer says, well, why? Can I have a little bit of enjoyment or time off? Do you think, do you think for a minute that heaven has had a time off ever since the fall? Do you think that God has said, okay, guys, let's chill for a minute. Every day, every second, every breath, he is watching you. He is watching me. He is protecting you. He is building up hedges because Satan is like a roaring lion trying to dis destroy. To destroy. To destroy. Lamentations chapter 3. Verse 22 and 23 is because God's mercies, we are not what? Consumed. Consumed. If he would not be looking out for us. A long time ago, I was a child in some science class. And we were told that the velocity of a raindrop coming down, if it wasn't for the atmosphere and everything that comprises this world, it would be like a bullet when it comes down. Oh, can you imagine that? Huh? So God gave his word. And for generations, it was transmitted from dad to son to grandson and so forth verbally. And then, and then, it came in written form. The Torah. Right? And they could just read and King David says, teach me your ways, O Lord. You know, we know this story about King David. But when he was in the depth, in, 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 deep in the, in, in, in the muck, he longed for God's word. And only then, only then, we have the assurance of his testimony. Because when he was in the miry clay, he felt what? God took him up 
and put him on the rock to stay. And, and then, and then, years went by. From Malachi to Matthew, there's 400 years of silence. Well, God is not silent. But in the written form with speaking to prophets, we have 400 years. And then heaven came down. And he came down, the word became what? Flesh, and he dwelt among us. The word. Jesus had only three and a half years to accomplish what he did. Salvation. What was Jesus' mission? Why did he come? To save man. And another, who is on trial, by the way, in this great controversy? Who's on trial? God. 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 Until the last day of this planet's history, God is on trial. Because Satan has accused him of being what? Everything but. He has portrayed, he has projected. That's the, that's the, that's the word, right? Uh, those mechanisms, defense mechanisms or so. Projection. What he is has put it on God's lap. And he is on trial. His reputation, his character throughout the universe. And the plan, the plan was for his church, the children of Israel, to be the beacons of light. But you know, Jesus said, I understand. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is what? Yeah. Weak. So God had to take his son. And by the way, this was done before the foundation of the world. Don't break your, your head understanding this because that's a mystery. And last week we said in Deuteronomy 29, 29, that the secret things, the hidden things belong to whom? God. To God. But the ones that are revealed belong to us. And we have enough revelation to be saved. So God sent his son willingly. He came down to demonstrate the love of God. To portray, this is God. This is my father. And he repeated it time and time and time again. And those huge crowds... And this episode that we're talking about right now, the Lord said, man shall not live for, for, from what? From tortillas, <laughs> from pita bread, right? Yeah. From rice and beans, from potatoes, my favorite one, potato salad. Oh, that's my favorite one. <laughs> he shall not live out of those things, but from every word. That proceeds out of the mother of, mouth of God. In fact, in fact, Jesus was quoting what the Holy Spirit had instructed Moses to write. And in verse two, he says, "Remember, Moses said, remember how how God dealt with us throughout." Verse three, he says, "But He humbled you, causing you to hunger, and then feeding you with manna, which neither you." Or your fathers had known to teach you that man does not live on bread alone. Had it been that for manna, we wouldn't have a children of Israel um, story. But God, God is so faithful, He's long suffering, that He will provide our sustenance, He will provide for our covering, for our shoes. John chapter 6 has about, it's a long chapter, about 66 or 70, 71, I think, uh, chapter, uh, verses. And here, here, the day before, Jesus had fed the 5,000. So now, this very day, they're flocking behind Jesus. And Jesus said, don't pursue food that will perish. We have studied this before. Don't pursue what will perish, but instead, the food that is everlasting. Fast forward. He said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will not hunger, and he who believes in me 
will never thirst. Very simple. If we eat of the word of God, our souls, spiritual souls, will be satisfied. Amen. Amen. One step further, if we believe, we will not thirst again. Very important. If you do not believe, you are hungry and you are thirsty. But the solution is there. And Acts chapter 4 and verse 12 tells us that there is no salvation in another, right? For there is no other name under heaven given among men which we must be saved. We are saved by and through Jesus Christ. Amen. That's it. By grace, right? By grace. But here in this instance, he preached to the folks. I am the bread of life. You want to live? You need to eat of me. How many times we get so twisted because we are not in tune. The Bible says that those things that are spiritually or spiritual must be discerned what? Spiritual. How? Yes, right? But let me give you a synopsis of what took place. This is John chapter 6, verse 41. When the Jews, when the Jews heard it, they what? They complained. They complain. Why is he telling us that he is the bread that came from heaven? 42. Who? Who do you think he is? Don't we know his dad and his mom? Don't we know? Don't we know what kind of school district he went to? Don't we know that he lives on the other side of the track? Don't we know? And complaining, complaining. And they quarrel, verse 52, among themselves. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? But look at verse 59. Where did all, all this quarreling and murmuring take place? Where did it take place? Where? In the church. In the church. Jesus is talking to church folks. And he is met with such a violent resistance. Only God can read your thoughts Amen. and my thoughts. Thank you. The others don't believe, maybe. Let me repeat it again. Only God can read your thoughts. Amen. Can you imagine that? The devil cannot. They cannot even guess what's going to take place in the next second that you're living. So don't be, uh, don't be uh, paying attention to those uh, fortune tellers. Jesus, Jesus understanding what the disciples were saying verse 60 as they were saying man what what's the point of coming to church too many rules too many regulations where can i have fun this is too much too hard any witness as any of these things have have come up in your heart You know, and God is not angry with you. He understands that you're frail, that you're dust. But he challenged us to go to his word and find out who he is all about. We need to know him. We do not need to know about him. About him will not lead us to heaven. But knowing him is a different story. Amen. Verse 61, when Jesus knew in himself, he's reading the thoughts. That his disciples complained about this, he said to them, Does this offend you guys? What's up? Verse 66 The sad betrayal of church folks. From that time, how many? Huh? How many? Many. many? many, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Can you imagine how? Jesus' heart was grieved at that moment, that day. What he had done for them, what they had witnessed, he had given plenty of food to eat the day before. And now they walked away. So he turned to his inner circle and says, 
You want to follow suit? You want to go? What happened? The Holy Spirit comes down to Peter and says what? To whom shall we go? To whom? Folks, once you have tasted the goodness of the Lord, where will you go? If you, if you do not want to surrender, if you don't want to go all the way with Jesus, where would you go? Well, it's, we know. I know. If I'm stubborn in my own way, I know what awaits me. Hebrews 10, 41. Hebrews 10, 41. It is a horrendous thing to fall in the hands of the living God. Yes, he is love, but he is justice. Amen. Let's not forget that. You know, a lot of times we like or we want to hear namby-pamby sermons, smooth preaching. But that type of preaching is leading thousands to hell. Jesus himself said, wide is the road and well paved there is no potholes there and how many are walking there many. how many, many. Huh? on the on the on the wide road many. many many how many how many turn their back on jesus that day many many i challenge you my brothers and sisters and folks that are watching not to be of that many the crowds don't lead to anything, just chaos. You know, growing up in that part of the world, under the uh, Cold War, you remember that? The Cold War? Yes. It was tangible. I have family that's, that are not longer with us because of that, those movements. And we were taught from children. If you see a crowd on the road, you Go the other way, because crowds always bring disaster. And when I grew up, university times, some unfortunate that wanted to be just curious what's going on there that hurt really bad. There is no safety. There is no safety following the crowds when it comes down to your salvation and my salvation. I have a buddy of mine here, upstanding fella, and he says one day, he says, Dennis, do you know, do you realize that only in America we can afford to be or to have allergies to food? <laughs> That's myself because he's a witty guy. It says only in America we can afford to have to be allergic to foods. You don't hear that in Africa or in the third world countries. You don't hear that in the slums of our Latin American countries. Those kids will eat whatever. But he says only in America we can say, "Oh, I'm allergic to it and be proud of it." Well, well, you know, um, I never, I never forgot this and. Um, and it, it, it is true. It is true. It is true. They're saying it's not a diagnosis, but it is a um, it's a it's, it's a term used in in, in in medicine. Failure to thrive. Have you heard that before? Yes. Failure to thrive. And it really hits the extremes of life. Children and the elderly. And what is, what's going on is that the, the body can never absorb the nutrients, the proteins, to make a balanced life. And then, compared to your peers, you are in deficit. That's basically what is failure to, to thrive. Pastor Travis D. Smith, and I have to give credit is a Baptist pastor, and he wrote a wonderful section on this. And I believe that God has so many people out there that are digging deep into the Word. 
And he wrote, failure to thrive is the malady or the disease of the 21st century church. Can you imagine that? Failure to thrive. The term failure to thrive is fitting diagnosis for many who profess to be Christians in America, but sit in their churches year after year with no visible signs of spiritual life, health, and growth. Christians in America are hardly undernourished when it comes to physical weight. However, there are too many who are spiritually undernourished, failing to grow and mature spiritually. Isn't that the truth? Yes, it is. A spiritually anorexic Christian is the portrait of 21st century Christianity in America. This is his own words, Pastor Travis D. Smith. And I was thinking, while we are together here, while we are together, it's my commitment that we will not, uh, that no one in this church will go to go on to failure to thrive unless you want to because you know not even God can force you to love him yeah but we will do what we can everything we can to prevent from any one of us and I hope that you that are watching make up your mind not to go into failure to thrive spiritually no wonder sin and lawless liberty abounds within our churches we have fostered a generation of carnal Christians who demand pandering because they are spiritual babies and sensitized to sin, to sin by their ignorance of the truth. So powerful, so powerful. Your statues are wonderful, King David wrote. Therefore, I obey them. The unfolding of your words give, gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. Folks, what is the message? What is the message? I told you last week, I have so many versions of the Bible in my, in my phone. And you do too. The other day in one shelf, I counted about 12 different versions at home. Do I have any excuse? Do I have any excuse for not knowing Jesus? No, no. Especially in America. Is there is there a physical excuse for having children with malnutrition? No. In America? No. But we do. Likewise, in our churches across Christendom. Why do we have spiritual midgets? Why? One thing. You don't care about the word of God. Basically, oh, we, my wife and I, have a few selected restaurants that we go to. Do you think the day that I am with so much hunger that I have put up two days or three days in a row, you know where, and I'm hungry, do you think that just by walking by those restaurants? with the aroma that is coming out of that cuisine will fill me up, huh? But I, my intention is good, the aroma. How can I quench my thirst and my hunger? How? Go in. Okay. Go in and do what? Eat. Eat. <laughs> Very simple. Very simple. You want to be a thriving, Christian, that you're longing for Jesus to come and do something for somebody else, you have to dig into the Word. You cannot depend on cassettes, on TV, or just by coming to church and listening to something, because you don't know if I'm telling you the truth. The Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul, when preaching to the Bereans, those folks, didn't take the great Paul's word for granted. Just he, they went and each night they were what? Checking out, make sure that what he said matched the scriptures. That's how you get to heaven. You know, our denomination has done so well. 
from the conception of time, 1863 as a denomination, that we produce so much material, so much that is right there at your tips. And a lot of times now, everything is, not everything, but <laughs> quite a bit is free. I have in my app, you know, everything, 100,000 pages written of the Spirit of Prophecy as we understand it, some of the evidence. Amen. Multiple books. It's right there. Do I have a, an excuse to be hungry for the Word of God? No. The only thing that is interposing between my digging into and being fed is my willingness. My willingness. Last week, I asked a question. Who is controlling your schedule? Who is controlling your menu this time? Who's controlling your menu? King David says, it is wonderful. It is wonderful. It unfolds. Your words give light when they're unfolding. And it gives me understanding. You understand it to the simple. If I will not display, but I have several degrees under my belt. That's all I'm going to say. Do you think that gives me the edge to question God's word? No. Or to play like, mm, yeah, uh, yeah. I, mm, mm, mm. I have to be simple, simple-minded to God's word. Faith comes from here and here through the word of Christ. There's always a connection. God gives, gives us, gives, uh, gave us ears. And when you hear it, it will lead you to seeking, to find out whether the things that you're hearing are in sync. That is what this wonderful friend of mine is doing. First time. And now, today, they're going to share with their king folks. My faith is based on the word of God. I am not moved by my thoughts or feelings. Because they're just like sand, castles on the sand. I cannot. I have to delay. I have to relay, uh, uh, um, rely on God. When you feed your faith with God's word, what happens to your fears? You know, there's so many folks. There were so many folks. There were folks that I met 30 years, 30 years, that would not give in. Wouldn't. Because couldn't understand something. Couldn't. But one day when when saw that life depended on a smidget of time, he realized and cried out to God. God was merciful and restored restored him back to health. And he became an a powerful uh, servant of God. So what what is what do we take from here? What do we take from here? Are you committed? Are you challenged? Am I challenged today to make sure that I am going at it at the Word of God every day? Every day, a little piece goes long ways. Goes long ways. I'm thinking of my career. Had I just been interested in just this, this little task and ignored to explore all this here to make sure that my patients were taken care of. I would have succumbed a long time ago. You can do that in any field. You should be able to explore beyond. And the same thing with the Word of God. One little thing leads you to another and to another. That's why Jesus said, this is like the man that goes and sees something there, and he buys the field, right? And goes what? And digs, and digs for that hidden treasure. Folks, the prophet Amos said this, Behold, the days come, says the Lord, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Those days are coming. Those days are coming. You can 
you can say whatever you want to. But that doesn't change what the Lord had said. Ava said, the Lord God says, right? Mm -hmm. It is come. We already have it. Conscious that you cannot take the word of God freely. You can't. You can't do that. We're in America, right? There are things that have been banned. Once you enjoyed it, you cannot do that anymore. The lasso, you know what a lasso is? Yes. Right? Lasso. It's closing, closing, closing. And it's, it is smaller than what you and I think. So what will be your response? What is my response to God's opinion? To God's opinion. So, in what I just said, what time is it? Hey, Hosea, it is time what? And Isaiah says the same thing. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts. How many unrighteous are here? How many wicked are here? Yeah. Why? Because all of us have what? Fallen short of the glory of God. But thank God. Thank God for his long suffering. Amen. Let him return to the Lord is the appeal. And he will have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Amen. How do we seek pardon? Where do we find pardon? Jesus said it himself. Search the scriptures, my favorite text. John 5, 39. Search the scriptures because in them you think that you have eternal life. And it is these that testify of me. Again, the appeal of the psalmist is taste and do, and, and do what? Taste and see that the Lord is good. The Lord is good, folks. The Lord is good, folks. Amen. Amen. The Lord is good beyond comprehension, beyond imagination. So, are you hungry? Will you try to Stimulate your spiritual appetite with the help of the Holy Spirit. Because folks, coming to church, reading God's word, listen, listening to a, a beautiful song, right? That's antinatural to our DNA. It's antinatural. That's why we have to ask for God. Lord, Lord, I believe, but I'm still struggling. Help my own belief. Amen. This is sanctification, folks. But if we stay right here, the world and everything, God's plan of salvation is advancing and it's almost coming to the end. And in my cuckoo mind, I might just be, oh, I'm just right enjoying the ride. But it's not so. I have to develop that appetite too. Eat of his word. Eat of his word. Let me close with this. If you're not hungry for God, you're probably full of yourself. I don't know who wrote this, but it's powerful. But let me just change it a little bit. If you're not hungry for God, you're full of yourself. Think it's either God in you and your ego and my ego or ego out but the two cannot abide together they cannot may god help us may god help us to make up make our minds not tomorrow but today today to take time to be holy to read of his word to explore the goodness of the Lord. Because in him. We have salvation. And the Bible. His word is the road. Is the atlas. You remember the Magnelli atlas. Oh I, I use that. Now we use GPS. <laughs> but that helped me a lot. A lot. When I first came here. A sure word. That would take me to the destiny. That I wanted to go. The Bible is far. 
more beautiful than that. Amen. It has the roadmap. It tells us what time we're living in and what is expected. Everything there. Let's stand up and uh, give praise to the Lord. Take time to be holy. Thank you for the challenge that you have posed to each one of us to get more interest, interested in your word, to take time to be holy. You have said be holy because your Father in heaven is holy. Not in our own strength, but in the strength that you give through the office of the Holy Spirit, through the aid of your holy angels, through the ministry of intercession of Jesus Christ, help us, Lord, to make the right decision today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Happy Sabbath. And remember that God loves you and uh, he wants us, all of us to be in heaven. Amen. Be blessed.